Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle and a lot of folks like to see what I'm working on and what comes into my shop so today I'm going to take you through a pail full of problems. Uh, as many of you know I do repair some uh, fishing reels for fleets and charter boats and in this case um, I got a bucket in the other day from a charter boat and um, this one's a little bit unusual because the, um, the reels that came in actually were were kind of purchased in lot. They weren't actually used on the boat that um, that I repair the reels for, but they came from another boat that switched over to more modern reels. And there's a, uh, a group of pen reels in here that I guess were sitting below deck in the uh, uh, and they took on a lot of water and they hadn't been maintained. They were just were sitting there, and eventually the captain of that boat just uh, worked with the uh, the fellow who takes the the boat that I work with and uh, basically gave him the reels. So. I've been asked to tune them up and we're going to go do that. So I'll show them to you. We'll talk a little bit about them. And uh, for the most part, I don't believe that they're broken. This is an old style Penn Senator 6.0. It's not the high speed variety because it's got the, um, the black side plates on it. Uh, probably has the thick drag washers in it, the old asbestos brake washers in it, as opposed to uh, uh, the newer HT100 setups. There's a tremendous amount of salt and oxidation. And again, that's probably from non-use. You can just kind of scrape it off. Uh, and we'll do that. What we're going to also do is we're going to get these ready for fishing. So this line is going to come off. We'll clean up the, uh, the spools. We'll root do the side plates. And there's no reason why this one I uh, can't go fishing again. So that's a Penn Senator 60 Black. We also have a Penn Senator in here that's in better condition. It's a newer one. It's um, you can tell by the uh, the branding on the side plates. Uh, this one seems in better condition. It has. Um, uh, it looks like it's been worked on at some point because the salt built up is this is a little bit cleaner. Still has the old line on it. So we'll do the same thing with this reel that we did with that one. And I think we're going to see a continuing theme here. Here's another one. Here's a jig master that came in. Uh, obviously, just the greening on this says it hasn't been used in a while. Kind of sat in the bilge probably and just uh, collected a lot of salt water, and that led to the uh, uh, the greening on it. And well, we've talked a little bit in other videos about how do you get rid of the metal corrosion. You could use minor, minor acids like a vinegar. You can use uh, chrome polishes. You can use um, harsh abrasives, harsh acids like toilet bowl cleaning, which which, which has uh, hydrochloric acid in it. But that's going to strip more than just the green off of it. That's going to take the brass off of it as well. A lot of elbow grease. Uh, some folks uh, told me that I should try an ultrasonic cleaner. Maybe I will do that uh, to see. But again, uh, this is function over fashion. Uh, the captain simply wants these able to go. Uh, also in this one, this has a leveraged handle. It's on the lowest point. We'll probably move that out uh, to give this one more leverage. So that's a jig master we're going to work on. More of the same here. Here's another jig master. Uh, black side versus burgundy side. I always get that question. So if you got a burgundy side, you're almost certain that that reel was made in the United States. On the black side, it's, uh, it's more of a question. You have to actually go, in this case, to the side plate here, and you will see made in the USA. The modern ones today uh, still share the black side plates, but do not include made in the USA. If you don't see made in the USA, it wasn't made in the USA. And uh, this might be in here. So here's an example of that. Actually, this one's in pieces. So what we have here is one that came apart for whatever reason. You do not see made in the USA on this one, missing a uh, side plate screw. The modern ones have the uh, uh, aluminum analyzed, uh, anodized, however you pronounce that word, spools. So that's also kind of a giveaway to the newer versus the older. And for whatever reason, this one is in pieces. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take that apart, figure out what's going on with that, why that one happens to come disassembled. Uh, another one here, this is again the uh, the older, the burgundy ones. Looks like it has a replaced uh, side plate. Just trying to check for ob obvious damage. Not seeing any, so we'll pull out the part as well. Uh, here's another one that came off of that, uh, that boat. And uh, again, a leveraged 
uh, leverage handles on the lowest. That's okay for the type of fishing they were doing. Most folks like the bigger circumference turn. So this one's an interesting one. This is the 500S. And uh, what's different about this reel is it actually has to take a part on the non-gear side. Uh, I don't like this one. Uh, I don't think it's as stable. So you'll see over here what we have is we have two uh, screws securing the bridge plate on this side, two on that side, and that's it. Then you have a little pin down here that uh, I think it rests on. And the same thing here. I got four screws kind of set uh, at different angles here holding that side plate on. I've seen a lot of frame twist with this variety. The other thing is it's not as common a reel. So if you break a side plate, you, you generally you're out of luck with this one. So what you can do is you can take a conversion on this one and uh, you can move it over, get that out of there and put a uh, fixed plate on there and uh, go work with that one instead. Here's another one. Uh, same story, so he must have bought a pair of them. Again, this is from the boat uh, that was given to him. In this case, our leverage handle. This is a 6.0 leverage handle on a Jig Master. That's kind of interesting. You can tell that because the knob is bigger. Um, is kind of in the middle point of this one. So again, these are basically cleanups, restore, and get them out there fishing again. They're going to be part of a rental a rod uh, fleet, so they don't have to be pretty, but uh, they do need to work. Here's a case where three screws are missing on the side plate. What happens with this, folks uh, often wonder or comment that they're missing the side plate screws. The boat, uh, boat vibration is the number one cause for these things shaking out. If you get on a 30 foot or, or so uh, charter boat or if you happen to own one, you need to make sure that you're tightening down these screws on the on a periodic basis, but then again, you need to make sure that you're having these reels serviced. From a service standpoint, I recommend heavy usage that you do it every month. Uh, uh, moderate usage, do it at the beginning of the season, middle of the season, and you're fine. Um, infrequent use, at least once a year, but when you're doing that, make sure all these screws are tight. That also goes for the screws that are inside here that hold the case on the inside. They shake free as well, and that's engine vibration on the, uh, on the boat. One more of these greens, and uh, you can see these have been sitting in a bucket for quite some time, unused, and I think it was generous for the, uh, the other captain just to want to put these back into use. And then finally we have a, uh, a good old fashioned Pen 60. I've done videos on these before. Not quite sure if anything's going wrong with these. These things are bulletproof. The problem that you have with this reel is that this reel has a very low uh, retrieve rate. I think it's 2.8, 2.9 to 1. So if you're trolling out there on a boat, or if you're drop fishing, man, you are cranking. And you can't, uh, you can't run a lure. If you were uh, casting a lure like a lob, uh, Hopkins or a, a leadhead jig, or something like that that requires a fast uh, retrieve, you'll miss a lot of fish because you'll be cranking like crazy, but that line won't be coming in. Uh, one of the things to do if you do, do do use a reel like that for jigging occasionally, make sure that you're spooled high with the line because that way at least you're bringing in more line per turn than uh, when you're way down here in the uh, near the bottom of it, probably 25% spooled. So if you're going to use this reel for jigging, make sure you bring it up high. But I'll tell you what, uh, from a, a pure strength standpoint for bottom fishing in rocks and wrecks where uh, speed is not important on the retrieve, you want to go ahead and, uh, and use something like this. It's virtually bulletproof. So that's the bucket. That's what, uh, that's what we're going to be working on. Uh, now I've done videos on the Jig Masters, the 6.0s, um, and the, uh, the Penn Long Beach series. So if you're looking to find how to repair those, go ahead and just search that within my videos and uh, you'll find a way to take these apart. But for now, I just wanted to show you a bucket full of problems that I have that I'll solve and uh, we'll get these back out there fishing again, which is what, uh, what my passion is all about. Uh, reels shouldn't be sitting on shelves, they should be used. And uh, the best way to get them to use is keep them in good repair so that when you do hook up with a fish, you've, uh, you've got it. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. Stay tuned for more. And uh, if you like it, uh, please indicate that. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Again, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.